Hello there. Uh, today I wanted to just share with you a little treasure of mine and maybe go through some some memories associated with it. Uh, this is a pack of tarot cards as you can see. Uh, and I'm not sure if this comes out backwards on the uh, on this thing, but there you see. Uh, you'll actually see RG tarot cards if you read that if you can read that the right way and the RG in question was Richard Gardner who was my um, I don't know if you call him my mentor but he was the person who really changed my life the kind of like the metaphysician the esotericist who really um, changed my life with his work and through him uh, I was introduced to Analog Tamadoyon's work on the elements of the elemental archetypes as well. Now, I mean, this pack of tarot cards took, apparently it took 30 years to get to me. Um, it started off in a, chop, a shop in Chiswick uh, in London, and it then travelled up to Yorkshire, uh, and eventually it got given to my sister, uh, who likes tarot cards and astrology and similar things um, and uh, by the person who actually ran the shop that was selling this particular pack of cards in his shop originally in Chiswick it got given to her and my sister sort of like put it on a shelf somewhere and eventually she just picked it up again and had a look at it and thought RG oh, and then she thought Richard Gardner and then it suddenly occurred to her that Richard Gardner, okay, because she knew that I was um, very, very involved in, in, in aspects of Richard, Richard's work, in a sense. Um, uh, and so they finally found their way to me uh, just a few years ago. Uh, so it's, it's quite a story. But, um, now, if you open this up, I'm not sure when these were done uh, exactly. There's a little, there's a little instruction book in there, which I'm going to have to look through actually, because that's probably going to be very good to go through. Yeah, yeah, that's going to look very good, I think. Yeah. So that's that's quite a nice little nice little book with a picture of the fool in it. And I thought what I would do is just go through the major arcana of this pack and just go through and just say what I remember from what Richard used to say in his books and things. Um, I must have met with Richard maybe about six times, I think three times at the workshops that he held with Magenta Wise, um, alternating weeks between him and Magenta. Um, and once when I went down to him, well, I met him twice on that one visit uh, down to Brighton, where I took a sort of a, a pilgrimage down to see Richard in about 1980. And... Uh, I went down to see him then. Was it 80 or 79? I think it was 1980. I think it was the spring of 1980 I went to see him. And that was the first time. That was my pilgrimage to go and see my kind of guide, you know, in a way. Um, and then I must have seen him maybe three more times. Maybe three more times, I think, for to go and visit him and have readings and things and chat with him. So I probably saw him six or seven times, probably met with him six or seven times in total, yeah. Um, I got all of his books, read all of his books, and they had a very big influence on me. But anyway, I'm just going to go through the cards. Interestingly, there's this design on the back of these. It's funny, I mean, I don't know, is, is that... Is that meant to be a lamb? Is that a lamb? Or a goat? 
or is it a lion or is it half lion half lion half lamb <laughs> I'm not sure when it's got a star above its head it's got a star above its head and then it's it has this banner which has the eye and the triangle in it it's very interesting card zero the fool now card zero the fool the fool was very important in to 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 richard i remember it was the thing which it was the card that represented super consciousness he took it to be like an androgyne figure that had had managed to fuse both the masculine and feminine energies and it was it was the it was the the card of super consciousness the card of the life force most pure in its purest form and if any of the cards represented god to him you know in a, in a certain sort of sense of that word if any of the any of the cards represented god to him it was the fool in the sense of representing the life force the intelligent life force seeking its way through everything you see the dog is attacking attacking the fool from behind trying to hold him back which just shows that we always have certain forces in our subconscious trying to hold us back so that was the fool The magician, the magician was uh, for him. It, it sort of like it, it represented the masculine energy, and and the and the. It was almost like the kind of the trunk of fire consciousness in a sense, along with the ace of wands. But it was, it was fire consciousness. But it was the fire coming from the sun. It was a very solar card for him, I think, um, and so it represented a kind of. Um, this energy which needs an initiation to bring it into into stability and, and, and into manifestation properly uh, but that was um, that was the magician so it represented this need for the masculine to uh, to start its journey find its way and to uh, and to gain the initiation into its um, Normally it would be manhood, but whatever it is, I mean, uh, I guess in terms of in terms of, of uh, analogs, uh, terminology it will be darthood, I suppose. You know, in terms of dart and void. So that's magician. The high priestess. This is the feminine counterpart to the uh, the magician. This is the feminine counterpart to the magician, so this is uh, this is kind of like the almost like a kind of a trump of, of of feminine energy in a sense, but it's an unawakened feminine energy. It's a feminine energy which which uh, lies sleeping within us. So it's connected with a kind of intuition as well, and 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 all sorts of things like that. Kind of an implicit knowledge, but uh, it is. It is. It is the. Uh, it's the feminine, in need of awakening. The Empress. This is the feminine energy. This is the feminine energy which has been awakened and which has had uh, the combination with fire so it becomes fruitful it becomes fruitful and uh, it becomes more of a force for life if you see what i mean so there's a lot of fruitfulness to this card so here we see that uh, whereas the the high priestess was uh, the unawakened feminine this is the awakened feminine that's actually in life far more as well. The 
the emperor. This is this is just as the empress was the high priestess when she's awakened in a sense. The emperor is like the magician when he has uh, found his place on earth and he's become more grounded and he's doing his work and this sort of thing. So again, this is a more balanced version of the masculine in a sense. And it gives you that masculine energy having become more earthy, more deep. There's more of a sense of the fire in the earth about this one as well, I guess. But um, yeah, that was that was the uh, that was that was the emperor. The hierophant. Well, this is kind of like the, the, this is the presentation, the outward presentation of knowledge. Um, Richard could be a little bit um, dismissive of this one in a sense because he was so aware of the. Um, of the, the, the problems of dogma and the problems of, of anti-sexual teachings and things like that that were propagated by the church. Um, so you see, this one, this one has that negative quality to it, but it also has a, 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 a compassionate and kind quality and it's a, it's a source of, of virtue, it's a source of, of, of honour and value so it certainly has its place you know but it is very much outward it's the outward expression of something you see it's the outward expression of something the outward expression of the truth exotericism The lovers, well, this this kind of shows the great the, the 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 work really the great work of love. This shows the great work of love and the choices involved in it. That's all I can remember about that. The chariot, Richard, I know he, uh, he he linked this to the sense of progress. So this is kind of like our evolution, the evolution of our consciousness. This is the onward progress. You notice there's two horses, so the two horses, there's two energies in balance to each other. Uh, the two faces on the on the shoulders of the of the charioteer. He's moving forward and he's moving forward. In a sense this is the, this is also the progression of civilization in a sense. It has to remain balanced and it has to be able to go forward um, true to its its kind of its its essence in a sense, you know. Justice, I can't remember very much about what he said about this, to be truthful. Can't remember very much what about very much he said about this. We obviously have, we obviously have the sense of balance here. Things having to be true.
the hermit. Now, again, this is another one of those cards that Richard could be a little bit down on because he thought it meant being shut up in the self, whereas Richard was all for throwing yourself into life. Um, so, but it is it is a preserved wisdom and it's a light that that carries it forward. So, I think there's a there's a, a good this this is a positive card, you know. Uh, but the thing is, it, it's it, there, there's wisdom in here. There's wisdom in this card, but his Richard's warning was that wisdom should not become simply the wisdom of books, simply the wisdom of the of the hermit. Wisdom had to actually be lived uh, for us to engage in life properly and transform the energies. The wheel, I think, for 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 Richard, this represented this this represented the game of life that we were to throw ourselves into and to actually start to live fully and properly, so that we would actually start to play this game, basically. Be the participants that we really are. Throw ourselves into it. Take a chance. It's like that sense you only live once. So you better live now. Now, this card, you will remember we talked about the magician being a trump of the masculine. Now that was true in, in, in more than one sense, because just as the, just as the, uh, High Priestess was a kind of a representative of the of the um, hidden and unawakened feminine. This is an actual representation of the of the force of the feminine power itself. It's water consciousness, basically, in Richard's terms and analog's terms. And if we compare them. If we now compare the two, you'll notice one is masculine, one is feminine. Look at the hats. They both wear the same kind of hats. And these hats are very particular. The hats have these floppy brims which form what look like figure of, figures of eight, which is essentially the... Uh, the sign of infinity and you'll see that in later tarot packs both of these figures in say the uh, Pamela Coleman Smith designs they have infinity signs over their heads rather than the hats themselves so and what Richie used to say was that these two cars these bringing these two energies together this was really had uh, the biggest potential for tra for transforming our lives and transforming our worlds. That's why the infinity sign was there, because the potential is infinite. The expansion of consciousness is potentially infinite in a sense. So these are two keys to super consciousness as well for Richard. Hanged man. Now, the hanged man for Richard represented truth and the realization of truth. Because when we see truth, when we realize truth, we realize that we've been seeing everything upside down and back to front all our lives before that point. It's that eureka moment when we suddenly realize everything we've been seeing has been the wrong way around.
So that was the import of this card. And Richard was very strong on that throughout his books. That those who see things as they are are often see are often vilified or rejected because what they see sounds upside down to the common view of everything. You know, it's like, what do you mean the world is round? Everyone can see it's flat. Well, there's similar things occurring all sorts of ways over and over again. To see the truth, there are, there are these key points in a person's life when they suddenly see that everything they've known up until then has basically been completely back to front. I had a similar experience when I was about 30. Realising uh, the, prim the primacy of the spiritual and, uh, and, and the, the, the actual nature of causality was not as we thought it was at all. <laughs> it was an absolutely beautiful experience. It was so liberating. death card for Richard this was the frame what he called the frame behind the physical so this is your essential energy pattern this is how he saw it this represents your essential energy pattern the thing that's behind um, all of these all of these sort of successive incarnations for instance I presume uh, but the thing is that so this is this basically says you have an essential identity you have an essential form you have a pattern which you can find and which you can live and be true to. Temperance, this is um, what Richard referred to as the Angel of Time. You'll notice the figure is um, transferring these, uh, this, this liquid, this water, between the two jugs. And Richard saw this as the, uh, the combination of the elemental energies, and I mean the dynamic elemental energies, so water and fire. So he saw this as being this um to and fro this 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 process by which the the elements became combined and leading to super consciousness in his view and and when this was completed then the angel of time would fly away and we would be free of time and we would be free of these restrictions you know um this for him was the angel of time it's the work of time to combine elements in this alchemical manner. The devil, for Richard, almost a bit like the, the, the reverse in a way, or the opposite of the lover's card in a way. Um, the devil for Richard was the what he termed the block on the life force. So in this sense, it represents a kind of block on the life force. Uh, and which stops, which stops the process of evolution, and stops the process of going towards uh, the realization of the full. I would think, though, that here you could also link this to uh, shadow processes, which are part of what, in a sense, bring us into incarnation. Quite possibly, that's my own feeling on it. Um, and so, and it's also, which in some senses determine part of our work. But it's a work to be engaged in, in a specific manner. So, 
One does not simply acquiesce in shadow. One has to transform it. The lightning struck tower. What happens when a society uh, just sticks to the blocks on consciousness and ossifies? Basically the life force breaks through and structures are broken down. So when we have a situation where things have become too rigid and the life force isn't allowed to, to make its way through, it will come through in a different manner and it will break things down so that they can live again. This is the Star of Hope, which follows on from this. Now, I can't remember exactly what Richard said about this, but you can see a lot of pouring of water going on here, so I'm sure this did relate to water consciousness in some sense for Richard. But uh, it's the Star of Hope anyway, which follows on from things. The moon, this is again is a, one of the great forces, but largely unconscious for many, many people. And that's partly the story of this, because you see it's all animal forms, which relates to the past and our evolutionary past. And of course, there's great wisdom here, but it is also the animal past. And he would um, mention that the moon, this in its negative form, um, water consciousness in its negative form is part of what underlies things like mob consciousness which of course is a, a very retrogressive thing in many ways you know the thing that attacks the outsider sun well the sun here is shown as a child and this showed that the fire consciousness has this childlike quality to it um, I think that's very important it does have this youthful childlike playful quality to it so I think that's all true um, can't remember very much more about what he said about this card
see. Judgment, awakening. This is the awakening. In a way, this has something to it, which is a, a bit like the, uh, a bit like the, uh, the hanged man in a way. There's a sense of a realization and a breaking through here, but this seems to be more almost more of a mass breaking through in a way. But um, it shows what could be, I think. Again, I can't remember much much about what Richard said about it, but it shows what could be. All the rising from this world of graves into this fuller, greater life. And here, again. Now, there are two things here. In the one hand, this is the second androgyne card. You can't actually see the, you can't actually see the uh, figure's genitals here. So you've got the fool, and then you've got the world, or the figure of the world. And you see there are the four representatives of the elements around it, perfectly balanced. And then this figure dances free. He would say as well, though, that the the um, uh, the ones represent fire consciousness, which he said were of small stature compared to the feminine form. Though this is in fact an androgyne, thing we have to remember as well. Um, that was, I think, that was part of Richard's kind of like bias in a sense, um, but in a sense, it's not a bias because water consciousness is this enormous. It's this enormous reservoir of wisdom we have from all of our evolution and all our pre-human states. It's a tremendous world. And fire, because it's based upon novelty, it can look like it's very new and young. And in a sense it is. It's, it's perpetually new, but it's also perpetually old. Because you have to remember that fire also is primordial. But it but it's part of its place that it looks young, it looks new, etc. I can kind of see it both ways, but for Richard, this was uh, this this showed this showed a kind of goal in a way, this freedom, dancing between all of the elements, free, with the two wands, and this figure that looks feminine but actually is an androgyne. That's what I can remember, basically. Um, must have forgotten a lot of stuff here, and I will see what I can find and pull up from this. Um, see what I can pull up from the booklet as well, which should be interesting. Uh, but that's what I've done for today. I hope you enjoyed it. It's just a little. It's not like a trip down memory lane, because everything feels very, very current to me. But, um... It certainly is something, honestly. You know, coming back to this stuff, finding it. Ah, uh, 